Hi everybody, it's Courtney with Honeybee Stamps and today I'm going to be creating a card using the Rocket Ship Card Base die set as well as the Far Out Friends stamp set. I'm just going to be using one of the images. So I cut out all of my pieces from the Rocket Ship Card Base die set and I cut one layer with heavyweight cardstock and two from 80 pound Nina Solar White and all of the little elements that will be glued down are also cut with the 80 pound. So I'm going to take two, the two of the lighter weight card stock here, and I'm going to score these right on the very top. And this is what's going to create my card base. Now, I can't for the life of me find my scoring tool. So I'm using the back of a cheap paintbrush. And the first one is fine. The second one, the paint came out of the off the paintbrush <laughs> handle, but that's okay. That'll be covered. So next I'm taking the inside panel of my card and I'm going to stamp out this little astronaut girl here and I am using my mini misty here because I know it's a large image and I'm probably going to have to stamp it twice which I did. I used blackout ink by ink on three because it is a Copic safe ink and I'm just stamping her right on the inside of the card. Now we're going to put all of this together later. I'm just kind of getting all of my pieces together first. Next, I'm gonna color all of those little elements that will be glued to the front of the card. We have two little circles here. We have the top of the rocket ship. We have the little base and the little wings. I guess you'd call them wings. I'm gonna call them wings. And I'm gonna color these with my Copic markers. Now, the same combinations that I'm going to be using for these little pieces are the same combinations that I'm going to be using for the little astronaut girl. So if you're having a hard time seeing the marker caps, don't worry, once I zoom in, you'll be able to see the colors. But for the top portion of the rocket ship, I'm just starting off with my lightest color, which is an R22. And I'm just getting the paper a little saturated, and this will make the blending a little bit easier. I'm going to go in with that scary dark color and I'm just going to add a little bit of that on either side and then I'll start blending that out with my two mid-tones and I'll just keep the very center of this little piece for that R22 which is the highlight color. So I'm also going to color in these little wings with the same color combination. I had to kind of play around with them a little bit because I wasn't sure exactly the position that they were going to be in <laughs> once the card was put together. So I brought back out that card base just to kind of see how these would line up so I knew exactly where to put my shading. Not the end of the world if you put your shading in the wrong spot. Nobody's ever going to notice the difference anyway. But I colored these pretty much the same way, just starting off. I did start off with the darkest color because these are smaller. And I'm just adding a little bit of that and then blending that out with the two mid-tones. And then I, once again, finishing off with that R22. Now, for this little piece that goes on the bottom, I'm not sure what you would refer to it as, I am going to bring out some blues. And I'm going to add just a little bit of shading on either side with my darkest color and then just blend that out with the two mid-tones on either side leaving the center portion of as a highlight now i'm using all the same blending family here so i'm pretty confident going in with the darkest color first i know that these colors are going to blend pretty well together i'm going to use the same blue combination for the larger circle now the larger circle is, you're only gonna see the outside of it, so I'm not really worried about coloring the entire thing, but I'm just putting a little bit of shading on either side and then just blending that out each time. Like I said, you're not gonna see a majority of this anyway, just so that I have a little bit of differentiation between the colors. I did bring out a BG10, I believe it was, and I just colored this smaller circle in solid, and this is gonna be the window. So next we're gonna move on to the coloring of this little astronaut girl. Nope, first I lie. We're going to add a little bit of shading to the rocket ship itself. And I want this to appear white, but any white object still does have shading to it. So I'm going to bring in some C markers and the C5 is the darkest and I'm just adding a little bit on either side. A majority of this is still going to remain white, but I didn't want it to be stark white. So I blended that out with the C3, C1, C00, and then I ended up bringing in my colorless blender just so that I had a little bit more of a seamless blend and I don't see where I left off with the cool grays. And that will kind of 
like I, well, a colorless blender is not going to blend, but I quickly went over this area because I want it to kind of all mesh together and my C's are going a little bit dry. So I didn't get the best blend in the world, but the colorless blender, as long as you go over it very, very quickly, it's not going to move around the color too much, but it will blend it a little bit easier. So next I can put everything together. So I am using liquid glue here. You can certainly use double-sided adhesive or double-sided tape, whatever you prefer. I prefer wet glue primarily because I can never line things up the right way the first time. And if I use a double-sided tape, once it's down, it's down. So this will give me a couple of seconds to kind of shift things around as I need to. They're very, very easy to line up. The top piece obviously goes right in that corner and the bottom little strip there um, fits tightly against the bottom. These little wings, again, <laughs> I had to move these around a little bit because I didn't have these lined up the right way the first time. But once you get that figured out, it's pretty easy. And for the two little circles, like I said before, these are going. this is going to be a window with basically just a frame to it. So I am going to adhere the smaller circle on top of the larger one and then adhere that right there in the center of the card base. So I went ahead and put this aside and we are going to work on the coloring of the little astronaut. And like I said before, I'm going to use the same color combinations for the most part, but I am going to start off with her skin tones. Starting off again with the lightest color to get the paper saturated, just adding a little bit of a shading or a little bit of a shadow underneath her hair. And I added two little lines above her nose just to give a little bit of shape to her face. And then I will go in with the darkest color, the two mid-tones, and then finish off with that same lightest color that we started with. There's not a whole lot of skin showing here, so you could probably get away with just a two or three color blend. I'm just so used to picking up the same color combination each and every time. Now for her hair, I'm gonna bring out some E50 markers. And for hair, I like to start off with the darkest color first. For me, it works best to do that so that I can maintain my flick lines. I like to use just the very tip of my marker and use some flicking motions or feathering motions and that way it will add a little bit of texture. And if you go over these areas too many times and try to blend them out, you're gonna lose that texture. So I like to start with my darkest color first and that way I can maintain those flicks and then I'll keep that texture to her hair. So I just added a little bit of shading where her hair would be parted in the middle and on the base of her little bangs there and her pigtails basically just on the top and the bottom of them. I'm not overthinking this too much. Next, I'll bring in the E57, and I'm just going to extend these flicks out a little bit further. And if you can see, I am starting my flicks basically where I left off with the darker color. So I'm not going over the darker color. I'm just kind of continuing where I left off. And this will be another way that you can maintain that texture within her hair. Next is the E55. I'm going to do the same thing. Just start where I left off with that E57, extend those flicks out a little bit further, and then I'll finish off with the E53. And I'm going to very, very quickly go over the highlight areas again, because I don't want to blend them. I just want to fill in those highlights. So next we're going to work on her little astronaut outfit here. And I'm going to start off with the C5, which is the same, the same color combination that we used for the rocket ship itself. And I'm kind of just adding this to random areas at this point, because I wasn't sure how much of this I wanted to remain gray and how much of it I wanted to add the blue and the red to. So I'm just adding minimal amounts of this right now to kind of some random areas of her little outfit. And then you'll see that I'll go back and add a little bit more of the gray combination later. So I'm just kind of keeping a center light source. Like I said before, it doesn't really matter. Don't stress a light source. Work, work on that later. If, if you're practicing your coloring, practice the coloring, not the light source right away. And then you can kind of work on different techniques. So I'm extending this out with the C3, the C1, and the C00. And this way it'll still, it will look like a light gray. It's not necessarily gonna look white because I'm not leaving any white space here. So once I had all of the, well, some of the gray, some the gray that we have right now anyway, I'm gonna move on to the blue combination. I'm saving my reds for last because reds tend to bleed so you need to be very careful with reds. But I'm just gonna add some random blue areas. So again, 
I'm going to keep a center light source and I'm just going to use the same shadows that I used for the blues that I did for the grays. So where I put the shadow on the bottom portion of her arm, I'm going to add shading to the bottom portion of those little things that she's got around her wrist, <laughs> whatever they are. And I'm using the same combination as I did for the little elements that went on the rocket ship itself. So now you have a better look at the color combinations that I actually did use. But I did start off with the darkest color because these areas are so tiny and I don't want to risk any bleeding. So once the blue is down, I can move on to the red combination. And again, this is the same red combination that I used for the pieces of the rocket ship. And I'm using my same shadows. So the bottom of her arms and um, basically a center light source. Again, going in with that darkest color first, because especially with the reds, I want to make sure that my colors do not bleed. So finishing off with the R24 and the R22 for my highlight areas and for the little buttons on her one wrist, I just added one of the mid-tones. You just want to try to avoid, and if you want it to match, you just want to use one of the mid-tones. doesn't really matter which one. So for the rest of her little outfit here, I wanted to keep these gray, but have them a little bit different. So I'm bringing in the C7 as my darkest color for these areas, but I'm basically doing my blending the same way as I did for the other parts of her, I, I don't want to say outfit, but I guess we're going to say outfit. And But I'm just going to skip the C00. And my darkest is obviously the C7. So it's just going to be just a tad bit darker than the rest. So it doesn't look too plain or too, too much of the same color combination. So blending that out with the C5, C3. And for this particular area, the C1 is going to be the lightest color. And for her little space helmet there, I am going to use that BG10, the same one that we used for the window of the rocket ship. And I'm just going to color this in solid. Now, this is a very light color. So you do want to make sure that when you're going around her hair, which is fairly dark, you're extra careful because the lighter the color, the more it's going to act as a colorless blender. So if you accidentally touch the tip of this marker to her hair, you're going to drag that color out, which I'm trying to avoid. So once that's all colored, we can go ahead and stamp out our sentiments. And these sentiments come from the Stellar Sentiments stamp set. I'm going to take three of them and line them up on my grid mat just to make sure everything is lined up perfectly. First time I'm stamping with these so they are a little stickier than normal. I'm going to pop those onto an acrylic black and stamp these out with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink on in the center of my card. And for the sentiment from for the front, I'm going to take two more of the sentiments from that same stamp set. Once again, line those up onto my work surface. Um, no, actually I didn't. I separated these because I figured it would be easier with the Y and the Earthling being capitals. And so I stamped these separate. Same ink though. So next we are going to go ahead and add a little bit of shimmer and shine. So I lied. First, I'm going to adhere my inside panel to the back side of the card base. And the only reason why I did two layers here is because once you color, it tends to bleed through the back and I didn't want that to show. You can certainly keep it the way it is. That's fine. Um, I just don't like to see those bleed lines in the back. So I added a little bit of shimmer to her space helmet and to the window with a wink of Stella pen. And then I'm going to take some Nouveau Crystal Glaze, or you can use glossy accents. They're very, very similar. The Crystal Glaze I find is just a little bit thinner and watery -er. <laughs> and I'm just going to fill in her space helmet and this window. I did give this a couple of hours to dry before I actually put my card together just to make sure. And once that is dry, we can go ahead and add our reflections. You do want to make sure that this is dry and this will work for glossy accents as well. I'm going to take my white gel pen and just go directly over these little windows and add my reflection. And that way the white gel pen kind of sits on top of that crystal glaze. So next I'm going to make sure that my fold lines are still there and still lined up. And I added just a little bit of wet glue again because I can't line things up correctly and lined everything up. And you just want to kind of apply some pressure for a couple of minutes to make sure that that glue really sets. 
and you can see that our card opens and closes just like a normal card now. And I did end up adding a little bit more shimmer to all of the other pieces of the rocket ship just because I figure you just can't have enough shimmer. And that is it. That is the card for today. You can see that it can stand up if you want to put it on display. It is quick and easy and easy to mass produce if you wanted to. So as always, I will leave the supplies listed in the description box below. Thanks so much for stopping by and have a great day.